Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan Campbell and this is Making Stuff. So let me start off by addressing the title. It seems like a very bold title, but let me assure you by saying that no, this is not clickbait. This is in fact the very first full length video documentation of a reed organ restoration on YouTube and possibly even the world. I know this because when I started this project, I spent countless hours looking for something just like this. And much to my surprise, I found nothing. There were a bunch of random videos scattered around YouTube, but all of them mostly dealing in only some of the parts of the restoration. All of them also from different people working on different organs, um, but never one complete full length restoration. I did however find a couple of blogs on the internet, the most notable of which is Rodney Yancey, which I mentioned during the series. A really great resource, uh, tons of restorations and pictures and blogs explaining his process. I must have spent hours going through his pictures and reading his blogs trying to familiarize myself with uh, the project at hand. I also found a great resource in a Facebook page called Read Organ Tech, where I found a whole host of friendly, helpful and educated people. But being a child of YouTube, I've always been able to learn better from seeing others do it than having to read blogs. And it came as quite a disappointment that I couldn't find a series like that on YouTube. So I decided if I can't find something like that, I may as well make it myself and hopefully in the process help others who are tackling a project like this for the first time. So before I came and sat down here, I did a couple of calculations regarding the time scale of this project. So it has taken me nine months to complete this project with 24 parts in the series. If I work on an average of 25 minutes per episode, that comes to about 600 minutes or 10 hours of actual footage. Factoring in, say, an average of 25 hours of work per episode and roughly 7 hours of editing for each episode, I would venture to say that this project has taken in excess of 800 hours off of my clock. So in this conclusion part of the series, I'm going to attempt to cram all 800 of those hours into roughly 30 minutes. So once that's done, right at the end of the video, I'm going to take some time to share my final thoughts about this whole project, the process, uh, everything I've learned, things I might have done differently, my favorite and least favorite parts of the project. So if there are any of you that are interested in that information, stick around to the end. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. May 
I've got no idea who that is, but I just found this picture inside a 120 year old reed organ. How cool is that? Huh?
So there we go, nine months in 30 minutes. I hope you enjoyed that. So before I share my final thoughts, I thought I'd tell you uh, the little I do know about this organ. Now, even though this organ is 120 years old, it has been in my wife's family for roughly 40 years. It used to live in her grandparents' house, but uh, years ago, after they passed away, it was left to her uncle and had been in storage ever since. Nine months ago, my wife made an offer to purchase it from her uncle, and that is how it came into our possession. So being that I really love uh, restoration videos on YouTube and the fact that it's really hard to find nice things to restore where I live, the moment we got it, the first thing I thought was restore it. Now being that I've never done a real restoration in my life, I'm guessing it was probably not a smart idea to jump in with a project of this magnitude for my first restoration. But that is what I decided to do and looking back on it now, nine months later, I'm glad I did. So my final thoughts. So in my last video, I mentioned that this restoration was a relative success. Um, I only say that because given my lack of skills and experience and knowledge regarding this instrument and its restoration, there is no way that I can call this a 100% success. Is it perfect? Was everything done exactly the way it was supposed to be done? Definitely not. But is it better than what it was? And I would say 100% yes. So this is definitely the longest, hardest, most challenging project that I've ever tackled in my whole life. And not only did I learn a ton of things about reed organs and antiques in general, I also learned a whole lot about myself. Those of you that have been following my channel for a long time will all know that I am not the kind of guy that likes to do the same thing over and over again. My channel has changed and evolved so many times I've almost lost count. And I'm the kind of guy that gets bored with projects very quickly. So just the fact that I managed to push through with this project and see it through to its end is almost a miracle in itself. There were so many times during the course of this project that I almost gave up. There were nights when I would go upstairs to my wife and I would tell her how I was going to take this organ and set it on fire and never looked back. There were times I felt like I was going to drive my car off a cliff. But thankfully, for the most part, I managed to keep a cool head and I managed to push through. So I have definitely learned that I am capable of a lot more than what I gave myself credit for. Most of my projects before this have always been roughly a week or two weeks maximum. I've never really spent any more time than that on one single project. But finishing this organ has really given me the confidence to tackle projects that I never would have before. So what are some of the things that I would do differently if I had to start this project today? I would definitely do a whole lot more research into the project that I'm about to tackle. I would most probably have ordered all the materials and supplies needed to take on this job before I even started it. I really think that the materials were probably one of the biggest challenges that I had to face. I didn't have the right leather for the mutes, I didn't have the right felt, I didn't have the right cloth for the bellows, I didn't have the right glue. And even though I managed to find some substitutes, uh, most of those materials were not intended for the purpose that I used them for. So whether or not they're going to function the way they're supposed to and whether or not they're going to last as long as they should, all remains to be seen and that is one of the reasons why I call it a relative success because at any moment any one of those components or materials could fail. One case in point is the leather that I used for the mutes. Now because the leather wasn't as plush as it was supposed to be I have noticed that my mutes aren't making as well of a seal over the reeds as they should and I suspect I'm losing a bit of air there and as a result of that when I play the organ even when all the stops are pushed in and it's not supposed to be producing any sound there is still a little bit of sound coming through when I play the keys but that is not a major problem and I'm kind of hoping that after a couple of months of standing that the leather that's in there is going to settle and make a better seal but all that is in the past now looking forward if anything happens to break or fail on this organ I know that I will be able to repair or replace anything that needs to be repaired or replaced going into this project i didn't even know what a reed organ was i've heard of organs before i'd always thought that the only kind of organ there was was a pipe organ a reed organ was a totally new concept for me but it was so rewarding when i started putting this thing back together and i knew exactly what every single part what every single mechanism was meant for what it did why it did what it did and it was truly amazing to see how much i'd learned in the last nine months so what did I enjoy most about this project? 
being that I'm a fairly technical, uh, mechanical kind of guy, I'd have to say that the mechanics of this organ was by far my favorite part in the whole process. So the first mechanical piece that I tackled was the stop action and I have to say by far that was my favorite episode of the entire project. Just seeing how all of the stops actually worked was one of the most interesting parts of the whole process. Seeing the actual mechanical workings behind the stops and being able to follow all the mechanisms all the way to their destinations and figuring out what each one of them does. And then as I mentioned before, another contender for my favorite part of the series was obviously putting it all back together and having everything pretty much work the way it's supposed to. So on to my least favorite part of this whole series, and I'd have to say that that would probably be the bellows and the case. Those were the two things that I left for last. The reason I did that is because I expected them to be the easiest. So once I'd gone through all of the action, my idea was that it was going to be a sprint to the finish, and that was definitely not the case. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, but I did explain a lot more in those actual episodes. So in closing, I would just like to say a very big thank you to every single person who has helped me along the way. Um, whether it be in the comments on my YouTube videos or on the Reed Organ Tech. In the early days of this project, there were a couple of people who were really helpful and gave me a ton of advice. Throughout the remainder of the restoration, I kind of feel like I've lost some of them because I didn't always follow all of the advice that was given to me. Um, I did try my best to explain in most of the cases why I didn't follow that advice, but to those of you who did give me advice and I didn't follow it, um, I apologize. The one person that stands out the most for me is Dara Connolly, who I met on the Reed Organ Tech, and by far he has been the most helpful and given me the most advice. So Dara, I really hope I haven't disappointed you too much throughout the remainder of this restoration, but please know that there are a whole lot of things that I never would have been able to do were it not for the help that you so generously shared with me. And to everyone who's been following along with this project, um, thank you very much for watching. To everyone who has become inspired by this series to start their own organ restorations, that makes me truly happy and that is one of the main reasons why I did what I did. I've had quite a number of people commenting on my videos, telling me how helpful my videos have been, telling me about organs that they've picked up on the dump or been given by a friend or found within the family, and how my videos have now inspired them to start restoring their own organs. Words can't really describe how good that feels. To know that little old me um, in his workshop here at home making videos on YouTube has inspired maybe five or even ten people thousands of miles away, oceans away, to try something new is just amazing. So being that I don't plan out a script every time I come and sit here in front of the camera, there may be things that I've forgotten to say, things that I might have wanted to say, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. I've already used up a whole lot of your time. Um, if there are any questions that you'd like to ask me, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see what I'm going to do next. It's definitely not going to be an organ. But all in all, thank you very much for watching and till next time, keep making stuff.